Hello and welcome to this week's Lightroom Tips and Tuition. And we're looking at five photos sent over by uh, the Faith um, trainees. And we've got, yeah, when I look at it, one portrait, like a candid sort of portrait. Uh, and then four landscape style shots, all looking a bit colourful and HDR like. So let's uh, have a quick work through. So oh, the first one. So you've got this man's attention somehow. I don't know what you've done, but um, looks like you're using a very wide aperture. Let's go and have a look at it. Oh, it's, it's a 600 millimeter lens. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's that's big. Um, 600 millimeters f 6.3, 250th of a second. So I'm guessing this must have been on a uh, tripod to get it sharp. Let's have a little zoom in. Yeah, it's pretty sharp. You can see the artifacts of. Um, a sharpener going on here with this little bit of grain but it's not not too offensive it just looks like a bit of a, a bit of film grain or something like that um, so yeah it's uh, there's no real context to the shot so it's just a character shot almost a portrait um, I mean he's a bit of an old character probably somewhere cold like his hat um, this, this thing here is sort of bothering me a little bit I don't know what it's just under the bench by the looks of it uh, maybe get rid of that a little bit and there's a bit here as well I mean you, you have blurred out the <coughs> these things quite nicely with the shallow depth of field which you'll get at 600 millimeters um, so that, that's focusing a little bit more on him um, it's not really shouting anything out to me but I think it's a you know, pretty competent sort of shot it's, it's lit by natural light cat street candid um, and there's a nice bit of connection with him. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything else I'd really do to this one. I mean, if you just wanted to draw the attention in a little bit, you know, you can always darken the edges slightly like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, sort of uh, sort of thing I was getting over in India, really. You know, you sort of wait for people to have a little look over, click and then smile and go and show them the shot, and they seem to be really happy. In general, <laughs> right? Okay, so yeah, I quite like that shot. Let's have a look at the second one. So we've got a rose in amongst lots of um, foliage, by the looks of it. I've never been a fan of white vignettes. Don't know why. It just reminds me of Christmas cards in from the seventies. So, if anything, I use dark vignettes to draw the eye to the centre of the shot. Whereas this sort of draws the eyes to the edges of the shot, really, because the, you're attracted, well, like magpies, are attracted to bright things. So, first thing is, you, your subject is one quarter of the shot, and then three quarters is doing nothing. So, why not maybe just try a different crop? So that I mean, it's still it's still using the rule of thirds. So you can have it on the side like that. Let's go back, or maybe keep the the sort of vertical crop if you need it. It's just a lot of dead space, as I would call it, really. I mean that's a bit central, but I mean, but realistically, you know, if you've got a, a subject with very little else in, like this shot is, you want to be making the subject more dominant. Okay, so now we've zoomed in a little bit. It's not sharp. Let's have a look at the edge. Yeah, it's another. It's one of these um, motion blur things. See this little rim around there. When you're taking this shot, the cameras move. Oh, it's a thirteenth of a second. F nine, forty one millimeters. Yeah, that's why. So you've shot it at the lowest possible ISO one hundred, which an F nine, which is quite a small aperture, and it's definitely going to give you a long shutter speed which it has done and you're going to get blurred shots if you hand hold him and you're unsure about all this sort of stuff use um, T, T mode or S mode if you're on Nikon and set it to whatever the longest focal length of your lens is so if you're using say you know a, a 7200 put it in TV mode and set it to 200th of a second or maybe 320th just avoids this problem okay because that's good for nothing other than some crazy sort of um, filter effect which you can get maybe if we took the clarity right down 
contrast up. See, see what happens. You start to get this sort of dreamy effect going on. You know, I mean, you, you can certainly do something with it. It's just if you printed it, it just looked very blurry. And uh, yeah, there you go. Add a bit of split toning to it, maybe give it some nice, nice red highlights. Uh, maybe a bit of sharpening. Nah, I don't think sharpening is going to help out. So it's the other things you want. So yeah, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna hand hold shots, be really aware. This is probably the most important thing. Really, is if you want sharp shots, hand holding, you've got to have uh, at 14 millimeters. You need at least a 40th of a second. At 200 millimeters, millimeters you need at least a 200th of a second. Okay. So. Looks like we've got a series of three from somebody here. So uh, let's just have a look at these. So as a as a set. So first one here, and then the next one, and then this one. So it's an interesting, an interesting subject because you've got this clearly. A structurally built thing, yeah. It's not just a, a dry stone wall. This is actually shaped stone. Um, these pretty cool bridges. Um, so it looks like it could have been something to do with, I don't know, a mill or um, you know, somewhere where they use water power back in the old days. Um, I quite like this, this oldie worldy pack horse bridge kind of thing. Anyway, so let's just have a look through them. I think this is this one's too flat. Um, so if you look at the histogram here, it's um, you know it's pretty much there's nothing bright about it. So I mean, obviously that's easy to fix. You just put, put the whites up and bang, there you go. You got a bit of life all of a sudden. There you go. Easy fix that one. See how much more vibrant it is now. You know, I mean, if you want to. You make those darker areas a bit more punchy you can just bring the black down a little bit this is just what you do in Photoshop with the levels control really just using the whites and blacks instead of your traditional levels control so if we now compare that to the one before it so the one which was looking a bit dead now looks much more vibrant than this original one so let's just brighten this up using a slightly different method let's use curves so Let's just grab all of the brightest bit, which is this down here, drag it up, and then go to a nice dark bit, maybe there, and drag it down. Notice I'm only doing it as ever so slightly. There you go. You just click on this little chap here, and then drag it them down. Bit of clarity. I don't think it needs any more clarity. Whoever's edited this has already given it quite a, quite a good clarity boost. Now, is it level? Looks as though it's going diagonally up to the um, right. How's that look? So I'm looking at this. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. If, if, if we assume that the water's level, it should be along there. That looks a bit wrong, though, doesn't it? Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, that looks like it's going to fall over. Anyway, so it's a bit of a right. So if you're getting a bit mixed up with your crop tool, press escape. <laughs> it goes back to where it was. Um, yeah, so it's an interesting one with this because it's quite a lot of this foreground rock and it's not pointing towards the uh, the bridge. So maybe maybe a more pano sort of crop would work just because it's quite a long, thin, uh, long, thin scene. Um, it's quite bright down this bottom here, so I might just. Use what we call it a grad. Ooh. So I'm just dragging this thing over it and then I'm gonna just darken it a little bit. That's probably a bit too much, it actually looks a bit what you can do is you know, just lower the highlights. Subtle, but you know you're not so drawn back down to that corner now, are you? Um so Oh, this is one that was really dull. Um, quite like the diagonal composition of this one, actually. And these oranges down there. Let's just see what happens if we make them more orange. So I clicked on saturation. I've got my little eyedropper tool. And 
because you've got a lot of green and a lot of orange are quite uh, complementary colors so they'll really stand out against each other. that's why I'm doing that um, is this tree helping I'm not so sure because it's quite blurred is that tree I might just try and draw it down a little bit like that I don't know puts that a little bit too central now doesn't it so again maybe a pano crop Let's try that but the big knots not there in this crop that's what I'm thinking um, again maybe draw the eye in a little bit because it's very bright around these edges um, yeah it could work couldn't it um, and then the third one composition this is probably the worst composition because this though this is quite an interesting looks like a yew tree from the wood texture it's quite an interesting shape it's actually detracting or taking your eye away from over here where the the bright bit and the the focal point is so um, yeah I mean it's in, more interesting from an archaeological point of view so if you're doing a bit of work for an archaeologists you've got all the, the stone and stuff there and you've, you've got more of an idea of what was going on with the structure but from a more artistic photography point of view it's a bit more confused it's just not and it's quite dark as well so let's do the um, if you use whites again so if we grab all the whites drag it up so that's brightened everything up that's gone too bright there so you can rescue that with your highlights there you go use those two in parallel and uh, you're going to get something that's a brighter and not burnt out probably if anything it might be a little bit too colorful for my liking this one how about taking the um, saturation down and then bringing it back in these oranges <laughs> yeah it looks a bit fake that doesn't it oh, well. <laughs> so i think there's a set they do work well together um doesn't like the easiest subject to pho photograph because there's lots of stuff going on around it so that's why I've chopped in quite heavily on these first two um, and on the last one well, let's have a think how could we I think this this thing here it's it's sort of you know this is the old argument about framing things with nature so that is actually framing the shot but let's just have a go at getting rid of that and keeping in the gnarled bits so we've got like a set of three which are all pano crops similar sort of shape see that now looks like two photos to me so you've got everything over this side and then you've got the rest of it which you want to try and avoid so let's bring this over put in I see that's not interesting enough now is it um, no it's not an easy one this and I think um, I'm going to struggle to find a crop out of it let's have a, let's have a little look yeah it's just too busy um, struggling <laughs> but I think of the three um that's that's probably the, the most pretty one because you know you've got the nicer bridge there in fact is it the same i don't think it is the same bridge as that one is it no this one looks yeah so i think that's the that's the one i'd go for out of that so so just just five this week um it's quite good to see someone putting three like a series of three up because it gives you uh a little bit more to discuss really you know it's it's like a, how that how the three work together so if anyone wants to put a little series no, no more than five maybe three then we can sort of look at them as a group and um, you know see see if we can work out the thought process behind it and how we can make the three work together or five okay well thanks for watching and um, Merry Christmas